In this session, we're going to take a look at one of the most powerful features in CorelDRAW for screen printers, and that is overprinting. Overprinting is a process of printing your color separations directly on top of each other to blend colors together. For example, you would overprint a yellow on top of a red to get the look of the color orange. Overprinting is very important for us as screen printers because typically we're working with two or three or four spot colors, and through the process of overprinting, we can get designs that look like they have 12 or 16 colors using just, for example, three or four colors. Here we can see the lumberjack set up, and here I've got the original 16 color, and here's the same design set up with just three colors overprinted. We used red, yellow, and black to create the illusion of brown through overprinting. One thing you need to be aware of in CorelDRAW is if you want to preview overprinting, you have to turn it on in the view menu. If I turn this off, you'll see that my lumberjack here has a lot of tints of black in the hat and shirt and pants, and that's because I'm overprinting. But if I go to View, Simulate Overprints, I can see that color or representation of it directly in Corel's Raw. Let's see how we handle objects for overprinting. And I've got some simple overprints set, down, set up down here. Here I have a yellow and a red blended together to make an orange. And if I move this over, you can see here's the yellow and my red is a tint of Pantone 1788C. If I right click here and come down and turn off Overprint Fill, you'll see that you won't see the blending there. But if I right click and select Overprint Fill, you'll see it. Now working with Vector, you want Overprint Fill. I'm going to hit C and E and we'll put that back. But down here I have a couple of monochrome objects. You see bitmap monochrome. 57% Pantone 1788C. And this is actually a red Pantone. And here what you do with the Pantone is you select Overprint Outline. Excuse me, not the Pantone, but the Monochrome. Overprint Outline as opposed to Overprint Fill when you're dealing with Monochrome. Go ahead and sit, hit C and E there. Let's take a look at how we'd set this up. I'm going to go ahead and I want to take this shirt that I have here in this Lumberjacks logo and convert it to an Overprint just to show you how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to go to Advanced Tools, Simple Steps 3, and I'm going to bring this down in color. I'm going to click Create Selection Palette. You can see I've got 16 colors and 16 tints. I'm going to go with a black, golden yellow, red, white, and brown. I'm going to click on One Click Conversion, and I'm going to bring that down in colors. Now, I'm only going to do the shirt here. On this particular graphic, I've done everything, and we'll use that to separate. But just for the tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to do this just with the shirt. I'm going to select all the objects that are in the shirt here, and actually I've already got all these grouped. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill this with a Pantone white, and I'm going to start working with my tinted palette here. And here is the palette tint that was generated when we brought down the number of colors in the Lumberjack. Now, with this selected, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a white because I'm going to be overprinting, and I don't want to really overprint against a black background, as you can see there. But I'm not going to set this to overprint. You can see that this is not set to overprint fill. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. What I'll do is paste this in. Now here I'm going to go with a tint of the red. Let's say we'll go with a 35% of the red. I'm going to right click on this and click on overprint fill. I'm going to paste again. This time I'm going to go with the golden yellow. Let's say we'll go with 70% of the golden yellow, and I'll right click on that and select Overprint Fill. Now you can see we've got our orange looking color here. Then I'll go ahead and paste again, and I'll use, let's say, a 20% of the black, and I'll right click on that and I'll select Overprint Fill. And now you can see I'm very close to my colors. Now I'm going to go over here to my Object Manager, and right here. I can see that here is my brown, or my black, excuse me. I'm thinking about the color of the shirt, but here's the black, here is the golden yellow, and here is the red. Now I can experiment with this by selecting these groups of objects that I've set up in the Object Manager and clicking on different densities of the color. If I want to go with a much lighter golden yellow, I can see how that starts to bring the strength of my brown down or the strength of the yellow in the overprint. If I want to see how it looks perhaps with a bit of a stronger red, I can go select this group in my object manager. I know that's the red down here, and then I can go to my palette tint and select that. I'm going to go back to a, a lighter tint of the red. 
Now, once I've set all this up, what I can do is I want to go ahead and take all of these objects here that we've created. I don't want the white one that I had in the background. I just want those three. And I'm going to bring these over here. And I want to get these in front of the white. So I'll just right click here and I'll go order. I'll go to in front of and I'll click on the white. Now I've still got all three of these selected. I'm going to hold down shift, click on the white. I'll hit C and E to align those again and that'll put those back in place. Now for my shading, I'm going to select all the objects that are on top of the overprinting objects I've just set up that are the shading. And I can make this shading by, we'll go ahead and group these. If I come up here and I'll say, let's go with 35% Pantone Black C. And then we'll go ahead and right click on this and we'll select Overprint Fill. And now I've got my shading and I can pick a little bit darker there if I wanted, as you can see, until I get to something that resembles the shading in a way that I'm satisfied with. Now that's how we work with overprinting. Now here I have an actual overprinted design all set up. And let's take a look at how this color separates. Let's hit Control C. We'll go to a new page. We'll select OK. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a landscape. We'll paste him in. I'm going to go ahead and resize him. Now you can see here that I don't have simulated overprints enabled in this document, so I can't see that. So I go to View, Simulate Overprints. Now I can see the brown. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and verify that I use the right colors when I set this up. So we'll always verify with simple steps before we start. Over simple steps three, create selection palette. You can see I have five colors. I probably used a black C instead of a hexachrome black, so I probably have two Pantone blacks in here. I'm going to go ahead and select show color names. I'm going to get my yellow, my red. Come down here. I'll go with a Pantone hexachrome black C. Yeah, I get some Pantone black 6C in there when I was doing my overprinting. And then we go with the white here. So we're down to four colors. Click on one click conversion. Let that process. Then we're going to go to separations. Now what I want to do here is convert to half tones, but I want to blend my red and my yellow together a little bit better because there's a lot of blending going on there. So I'm just going to take this red and I'll go ahead and set this up at a 67.5 angle just so it kind of sets the angle off a little bit so we'll get some better blending with the color. That's all set up for my separations. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click here on Generate Separations. We'll let this process and then we'll take a look at how this overprinting works from a halftone standpoint and get a simulation of what the color mixing would actually look like. Once Simple Steps has finished processing our halftone color separations directly in Corel Draw, let's take a look at how this overprinting is going to work. Now here we can see we've got the golden yellow. And we use that in our shirt, if you recall, and you can see here it is set up as 100% of the color. In other words, it wasn't separated out. Now let's go ahead and change this to a golden yellow. Just use a right click there. Pantone Trans White, we're not going to need. I'll go ahead and delete that. And I think on that page, when I did my steps, I actually had that set to overprint. Here's our hexachrome black. I'll bring that in last. Here is my Pantone Red of the 1788C. Go ahead and copy this, go back to the golden yellow plate, paste that in, we'll right click and make that a red and then we'll left click and make the background transparent. You can see the formation of the blends through overprinting that are making the color orange here in the shirt. Go ahead and get the black, select that, we'll copy that, we'll go back to the golden yellow plate and we'll go ahead and paste in. We'll left click to knock out the background color and there you can see we have created through overprinting the illusion of brown in the shirt of the Lumberjacks graphic. So here we have, if we were printing on white, a three color design that looks like it has brown and skin and all these different colors when actually it's just comprised of three colors and we're using tints or density of color for the look of the skin and we're using overprinting for the brown in the shirt and the pants. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like if we convert it to an RGB, just so we get a little bit accurate, more accurate color representation here in Draw. Take this and I'll go to Bitmaps, convert to Bitmaps. We've got 300 DPI RGB. I'm going to turn off transparent background. I'll go ahead and turn on anti-aliasing and I'll go ahead and select OK and we'll let that process. And then once that's finished processing, we get a much better preview of our 
halftones and our colors directly here in Corel Draw. So this is the power of overprinting and it will give you a distinct advantage, especially when you're dealing with two and three color spot color separations or spot color designs working in Corel Draw. We can see in the lumberjack here that the brown really does look like a brown and when you get it up on press and print it out, you'll find that you get very close to the same color. Go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.